Today's chapter is a little bit different. I'm gonna share with you small ways in which we've added a little bit more meaning into our life as a family. And this chapter is Christmas themed. I'm gonna share with you about our Christmas tree that you can see in the back there if you're watching this on a video podcast. I'm gonna show you our special Christmas memory ornaments. Instead of regular Christmas tree ornaments, we actually hang small items that we've collected throughout the years, things like holiday souvenirs. There are pictures in there, so I'm gonna show you some of those. This is a Christmas tree tradition that I started a few years ago, and these ornaments, they are a lot more than just decorations for the tree. I hope it will inspire you to bring some joy and meaning into your life as well in small ways. If you're catching this on the video, podcast on YouTube, you'll be able to see some of the ornaments that I'm going to show you. I invite you to, to go over to YouTube if you want to see them. I'll leave a link underneath wherever you're finding this podcast. If you're hearing this on audio only, I will do my best to describe some of these to you. Hi, I'm Mariela. Welcome to Productive Introvert Community. I support introverted solopreneurs in developing healthy habits so that they have the energy to work on their goals without daily routines that feel forced or that only last two weeks. Our special memory ornaments. Basically, if I draw a Venn diagram, memory ornaments would be at the intersection of random souvenirs that I had no space for and a dislike of mass Christmas consumerism. And a new meaningful Christmas tradition was born, yay! This started as a silly idea a few years ago and it's now grown into a, a bit of a tradition that I really love. I get small gifts and souvenirs from loved ones all the time. They are special and thoughtful and some of them are even handmade. I had a collection of these, these, these tiny items and I didn't know what to do with them. I wanted to have them out on display, but I don't really like a lot of clutter around. Although if you look, if you were in this room right now, you'd be like, oh, you don't like clutter. <laughs> My space is pretty cluttered. I'm a naturally like messy person, um, but clutter can overstimulate me. So I, I, I kept them in a box or a drawer for, for the longest time. But every time I'd open the drawer, it would be a, why do I keep this stuff feeling rather than that I was happy to see them. Even though they were really special to me and I didn't want to just throw them away or, or get rid of them. So one day I had the silly idea to hang them in the tree. And I loved it so much that now every year I take out the box with the ornaments and I am really happy to see these little items. And I get to go through memory lane. Sometimes there are, there are things that, that I'd forgotten I had, and it will take me back to a special time with a friend or a special um, connection that I had with someone. It's really a wonderful way to start the Christmas season. And that's why it, it became a natural tradition. I don't even think about it anymore. Sometimes I don't even realize how weird it is until I see a traditional tree with Christmas balls in there and like, oh yeah, that's, uh, that's actually what a normal tree looks like. Let me show you a couple of these. Um, there are some really random. this very year at daycare and that I decided to add. I have some pictures in here with friends and uh, family. I will blur out the faces of these pictures to protect people's privacy. Um, this one, this is also pictures. It's a garland made out of passport photos of me ever since I was a kid. When I grew up, it was a tradition to take a passport photo every year. Uh, and not for traveling. I mean, I never traveled as a kid. The first time I ever really left the country was when I moved to Europe to come live here. But that was a tradition back then when I, where I grew up and people would just keep them in their wallets. And my mom kept these pictures of me throughout the years. Growing up, it was hard for me to look at my face. I struggled with depression and I avoided mirrors. I had a poor self image and I hated my own face back then. So now it's quite meaningful to have all these pictures and I put this one up every year too. 
I've decided to make one for my son and I add a picture of him every year growing his little garland. And let me show you one more. This one over here is the very first ornament that I ever bought for myself. It's just a clear glass ornament with an intricate shape and later I added a red string to it because I thought that was pretty. I was a student at the time and I, I just moved to the Netherlands and uh, it was a struggle in the beginning. Money was tight and I remember buying this in clearance at a drugstore of all places <laughs> and uh, I went back to my student room and I hung it on the doorknob of a cabinet that I had because I didn't have a Christmas tree. I, I, I didn't, you know, I wasn't buying Christmas trees as a student. So I hung it on a doorknob of my cabinet to decorate my room. There are other things in here, um, some arts and crafts projects, little things that I made. Those are some of the memory ornaments that we have in our tree. They are totally random and they mean nothing to anyone besides us. And that's the beauty of it. Even talking about them with you today, I'd forgotten some of the stories behind them. But every time we decorate the tree, I appreciate the people in my life and the life that I have a little bit more by taking these out and, and decorating our tree with them. To me, Christmas is family time. It's a time to connect and spend time with loved ones. Ideally, doing that in a way that everyone can feel relaxed and just eat delicious food all day. <laughs> I really don't like the extreme consumerism, even the idea of chopping down trees to put them in our home for a couple of weeks. It felt a little odd to me. I'm from the tropics, so we always had a, a faux Christmas tree growing up. It was tiny and shorter than I am, and I am not the tallest person in the room usually. And it was really thin, like not, not an attractive tree actually by any measure. Um, and it wasn't actually really very festive. But my brother and I, we were really attached to that tree because it was connected to those times where we celebrated together as a family. And we were actually pretty heartbroken when my parents uh, replaced it, I don't know, what after 20 years, <laughs> maybe 20, 25 years of putting that tree up. I did like the idea of a real tree. I'd always seen it in movies. And there is something magical about having a real tree and you know the smell of pines in your home. But when I moved to Europe, the trend at that time was the bigger the better the tree. And that just didn't make sense to me. It didn't sit well with me. So I started to experiment with things that felt more natural to me. The first year that I opted for something else. I think I put some Christmas ornaments in this palm plant here. My then boyfriend, um, now husband, he had this plant in his apartment. And when I moved in with him, we didn't get a Christmas tree. Uh, we were students at the time, so we probably didn't want to spend the money. So I hung Christmas balls in here. Of course, it didn't hold very well. You know, the leaves aren't very sturdy and the balls kept rolling out and falling out of the tree. But it was the start of giving myself permission to do Christmas a little bit differently. We didn't need a chopped down tree to have the Christmas spirit in the house. I'm not judging anyone who chooses to have a real tree. This is a very personal choice. And if having a real tree is something that brings meaning and joy for you in this season, then by all means, please go ahead. The point is not to do something just because it's convention or because you're afraid of what other people would say or might think about it but instead to ask yourself, what does this mean to me? And whatever that answer is, that's your answer and take pride in that answer. We did also have real trees before and after that year that I hung the balls in the palm plant. After we moved into our current home, like this home that I'm in now, we got them from a local farm in the area. I thought that if it was from a local farm, maybe that would feel more natural to me, but it didn't really change anything. And I think it was last year that I decided that I didn't want the chopped down tree anymore. And we got one in a pot. So they sell them here in the Netherlands where I live. I don't know if maybe you have them in your country, but they're essentially house plants. Um, it's a, um, a pine tree in a pot and they, they grow. Um, they can grow more than a meter, much bigger if you put them in the ground outside. Last year on the podcast, I also did a Christmas episode around this time and I showed that tiny little Christmas tree. I'd hope to show you how much the tree has grown this year, but sadly that tree didn't make it. It's a steep change from indoors to the yard in spring. And being a newbie at this, 
I did not know what I was doing, <laughs> did not know how to prep the tree before putting it outside. I didn't do it properly. And unfortunately, he didn't make it. We later got one from an aunt. Uh, that's this one here. He has grown. It's about twice the size from when we got it. And it's doing okay, but not brilliantly, as you can see by the leaves. So I'm going to research what to do and to be able to prep this one properly so he makes it through and he can grow. Who knows, maybe one day we'll be hanging our memory ornaments in this tree here. This year I made a wall-mounted Christmas tree. It's based on an image that I saw on Pinterest and I love the simplicity of it. We made it from two pieces of scrap wood and nails and then I bought the garland and the lights to cover it. Every year I do prune the ornaments and I do give away or donate some of the ones that I no longer want to keep and I add new ones. This year I also put the Christmas cards that we got right here uh, in the tree. They don't have a separate area anymore where I keep the, the Christmas cards. They're all here at the tree and, and every time we, we come up to the tree, we read them. It works really well for us. I did have to figure out ways to make them all stay in the tree because they're odd sizes and different shapes, but I've come up with a simple hook now that I make from a piece of wire uh, and that I just make individual hooks to hang them up. The reason I shared this with you today is to encourage you to make your own meaningful rituals and traditions. We can do that in big ways, but we can also do that in small ways. Having memory ornaments in our tree is one small way that we do that in our family. What meaningful ritual would you come up with if you did it not because it was convention or because you were worried about what other people would think or say about it, but instead you ask yourself, what does this really mean to me? Thank you for hanging out with me today. Wishing you a wonderful turn of the year. Is that the phrase in English? I don't even know. <laughs> if I'm saying that wrong, forgive me. English is not my first language, so sometimes I mess up. <laughs> but I'm wishing you a happy new year, and I'll see you next week. Thank you for listening to the Productive Introvert Community Podcast. If you're an introverted entrepreneur and you're ready to thrive in your own way, then connect with me on thefrankermessage.com slash contact.